Welcome to this walkthrough of a question on oblique collisions between two spheres. Let's just have a look at the key information. There are two smooth uniform spheres, so there's no friction, P and Q. They've got equal radii. Uh, they're moving on a smooth horizontal plane when they collide. Sphere P has a mass of 4m, Q has 5m. Immediately before they collide, both spheres are moving with the same speed, which we're going to call U, and they make an angle to the line of centres of alpha. Immediately after they collide, Q moves at an angle of theta to the line of centres, as shown in figure 1. This is figure 1. The coefficient of restitution between the spheres is E. Now we have to show that tan theta equals 9 tan alpha over 80 minus 1. So there's a lot of information there. So we're going to work through this step by step. I'm going to show you the steps. Now, first of all, we consider along the line of centers the conservation of momentum. So this is moving, P is moving this way at U cos alpha. So it's going to have a momentum of 4M U cos alpha. And this has got negative momentum looking at direction because it's going the other way, um, minus 5mu cos alpha. And that's equal to the momentum after. And we're going to say, well, this is going to be in the opposite direction afterwards. So that's negative 4m, and we'll call that vp. We'll call the velocity along the line of centres afterwards for this vp. And likewise, we'll call the velocity for Q along the line of centres afterwards VQ. Now this is going to go that way in terms of the line of centres. So we're going to call that 5MVQ. Well, so a lot of M's there. M's often cancel out in these type of questions. So we can tidy it up a bit. 4 cos theta minus 5 cos, sorry, alpha minus 5 cos alpha, that's negative cos alpha. And I shouldn't forget the u there, sorry. Can't forget that u, otherwise this would all fall apart. And then I've got negative 4 vp plus 5 vq. And I'm going to call that equation 1. And there's a reason for that. Don't want to lose that negative sign. I'll be forming a simultaneous equation. Now would be a good time to use the um, coefficient of restitution, which is E, which is the speed of separation, which would be VP plus VQ. They're going away like that, so we add their velocities together. The speed of approach would be, well, they're coming together. They're coming together, and they're coming together in such a way that you've got u cos alpha plus u cos alpha, and that would be 2u cos alpha. So that's the speed of separation, because you've got vp plus vq after the collision, along the line of centres. And along the line of centres before, you've got u cos alpha and u cos alpha. Well, let's rearrange this a little bit. So we would have VP plus VQ is going to equal 2EU cos alpha. There we go. So hopefully that's made a bit of sense. But what I do want to do it's create an equation, a equation 2, and you'll see why I do this. I want to get rid of this VP, so I'm going to multiply all of this by 4. So I get 8EU cos alpha equals 4VP plus 4VQ. So we're going to need VQ. We're basing the whole thing about Q. Because we know more about Q, we have this bit of information here. 
Now, if we do this, we do this by saying, well, 1 add 2. So I've got that, add that. Well, this add this, I'm adding the trigger bits, is 8EU cos alpha minus U cos alpha, which is going to equal, well, look at this, the VPs, I've got negative 4, lots of VPs, add 4 lots of VPs, they cancel out, and I get 9 VQs, 5 add 4, 9 VQ. Well, that's going to tell me that VQ will equal something over 9, because there's 9 lots of them. Now let's look at the common factor, U cos alpha. And what do I have? I have 8E lots of it there, and I just have 1 lot of it there, minus 1. Okay, so far so good. Now, what I want to consider is afterwards then. What is tan theta? Because tan theta is here. It's a big part of what I'm trying to find. Well, tan theta is this. It could be seen as the direction. The tan theta is the direction. So it's your sine over cos, which is this direction velocity over this direction velocity. So what is the velocity perpendicular to the line of centers? Well, it's actually the same as before. It's going to be u sine alpha. The velocity perpendicular to the line of centers does not change. So we would have had some velocity here perpendicular and it stays the same but then we've got the over what would be cos theta now that say in the this velocity over this velocity would give you the tan of the angle well what's this well this is what we defined as vq up there so that's going to be vq that's how we would make tan theta It'd just be sine over cos, the ratio of what's going on here. And it's um, decided by the direction of the ball, the sphere afterwards, which is essentially your this velocity over this velocity gives you your tan. That's the theory behind it. That's why we're able to do this. So we know this is perpendicular to the line of centres. This is parallel to the line of centres. Well, what's going on here? I can make some replacements, can't I? I know tan theta, therefore, is u sine alpha all over vq. Well, what was vq? It was um, this. So u cos alpha. 18 minus 1 all over 9. Well, let's play around with this a bit. I'm going to have 9. I'm going to put, put the bits that are not trig there. 9 over 18 minus 1. I'm just playing with the algebra there now. And I'm going to have sine alpha over cos alpha. Well, sine alpha over cos alpha, what is that? That's right, tan. So tan theta equals 9 tan alpha, so far so good, that's what I'm after, over, look what I'm left there with, 18 minus 1. See if you can see it there. So I start off looking at using conservation of linear momentum along the line of centers. Then I use coefficient of restitution. That's thinking about speed of, uh, speed of separation over speed of approach. Then I am able to create a simultaneous equation to get this expression for VQ. 
um, I then know, well, what is tan theta, this tan theta? We, we know something about theta. We know we're going to use theta, which is why we just leave Q and we get rid of P. And this tan theta is all about the idea that we can create this tan theta with the ratio of this velocity over this velocity. And we can find expressions for that. So it does turn out quite nicely. I do have another question to follow this up. We'll probably run out of steam now, but do stay with this if you can. Um, now we have some new information. Given that immediately after the collision, Q moves in a direction that's perpendicular to the line of centers and alpha equals 45. Perpendicular to the line of centers. Well, what would that mean? If it moves perpendicular to the line of centers, it would mean that VQ is zero. Because let's look back at my diagram. It's moving like that. It's going to go like that. So there's no component here. No component this way. Right, VQ is zero. Well, what does that mean? That means that, well, we look back and we say VQ from the last part is 8e minus 1, u cos alpha over 9. Well, cos alpha, well, alpha's 45 degrees, so that's not, not zero there. U's got a value, so we've got to make that zero. In order for VQ to be zero, 8e minus 1 has to be zero. So 80 minus 1 is 0. Well, that imply, implies that E is 1 over 8. There you go. That's all because we know that VQ is now 0 because it moves perpendicular. It's, not, it's going all that way and not at all that way. Always nice to visualise in your mind what's going on. Now, part two, find the direction of P immediately after. Well, direction of P, we, we think about this. Well, what's going on? The motion of P, so, well, tan, call it anything, call it psi there. Just think it's, it's going to have some angle there. Doesn't matter what you call it, tan phi. It's going to equal, well, u sine alpha. So remember that uh, perpendicular velocity is maintained over the parallel velocity, which we called vp, if you can remember all the way back then. Um, so that's going to equal u sine alpha, and then I can get an expression for vp. Now I think back backwards to earlier on where is vp it's here so i could say if you look at this vp i can say well okay vp must equal sorry i don't know where i've written that it's um two e u cos alpha so vp must equal that minus the vq well Minus the VQ, that doesn't really bother me, does it? Because VQ is zero. So look at what we've got here. Let's cancel out the U's. So I've got sine over cos. Well, that's tan alpha, isn't it? Tan alpha. And I've got 1 over 2E. Well, what is E? What is E? E is an eighth. So 1 over 2, 1 over a quarter is 4. So I've got 4 tan alpha. Oh, well, what is 4 tan alpha? 4 tan alpha is got to be 4. Why is that? Because alpha is given as 45 degrees. Tan of 45 is famously 1. So there you go. Now, so that just gives us that tan equals 4. And that's going to give you enough information to get the direction. 
we'll just finish this off with thinking, well, explain how you have used the fact that two spheres have equal radii in your solution to part A. Well, equal spheres are very important. So it means that the impact will act parallel to the sphere. If one of them was bigger or one, one was smaller, then they don't hit each other quite right. And these questions don't act at work as well. So it's highly theoretical, obviously, what we're doing is not practical because in real life, spheres of different sizes, unless you're on a billiard table, maybe. So the impulse between the spheres acts parallel to the plane is what you'd be looking at there. Well, there's a lot of information there and I hope it was a little bit helpful at least. Thank you very much.